God, I, just, I felt like that was my job. I, I wish I did it once a week. So once a week, my daughter's three, my son was five, I said, I'm going to sit down with him and my wife, and I am going to lead the Bible study. Men, it's not the job of the church, the youth minister, the school, Sunday school, the pastor, to teach your children about spiritual growth in God. That's your job and your wife's job. It's not your job to drop your child off at church and pick him up after they say if you drop, if you take your child to church and neither parents, neither parent stays, there's a 30% chance that they'll become a Christian. If you take your child to church and one parent stays, there's a 60% chance. If you take your child, both parents stay, there's a 90% chance. Our job is to stay connected spiritually. Now I try to do that through devotion. In the spring, so in the spring, once a week, when they were three and they were five, I was selling devotion. My wife and myself, and my son and my daughter. When we get that old picture Bible, picture Bible book, you all see all the pictures in here of the rainbow, Noah and the ark, or Christ and the crucifixion, and Daniel and the lion's den. And I get that picture book, and I'd go with my two children, and my wife would have them put. Then I'd have them pray. For my daughter at three, my son at five, my wife, and I would go last. I wanted my children to hear me pray. I want to hear them pray. You know, sometimes the only time our wife hears us pray, our children, is at dinner. And that's the only time. The word of mouth is how words God used to be speaking. Back in biblical times, they didn't have these. It was all word of mouth. But, but it was our job. As they got older, I took the picture of Then we started, my children started dating. I talked about sexual purity with my daughter. I talked about drinking. I talked about tithing. I talked about how to choose friends as they got older. The last devotion I had, it was not long ago when they were 30 and 31 years old. There's no, no reason you should stop. But again, word of mouth. That's how it used to be spread. There's nothing better. You know, Deuteronomy 6-7. I'm going to read to you Deuteronomy 6-7. This is what it says. I used to sit out there and when, when a verse, I said, man, that, that verse is talking to me. And as I saw this as I was a young father and husband, Deuteronomy 6-7. These words I am giving you today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. That's a lot of time. That's a lot. I couldn't do it at all. I wish I could. I went to church on Sunday school, but I couldn't do the devotion. So men, you're going to be held accountable for how active you are. Accountability. Responsibility. God has given us the responsibility to be the leader of the family, the godly leader of the family. If you walk around in your house, you should be a walking, talking billboard for Christ. As your wife, your children, your neighbors look at you, they should see some semblance of Christ in God. That is our, our, that is our responsibility. For our children will look at us and see God. And, and, and if you look, go back to biblical times about responsibility. About responsibility had to look at the responsibility God gave the nation of Israel. He said, "Listen, I got all these heathen nations. Now, Israel, I'm going to choose you. And we got these heathen nations, and if they want to see you, they they want to see me. Look at Israel. All you do is be obedient. If you're obedient to me, I'll give you everything you need. Not everything you want, but everything you need. Just be obedient. And y'all just look at Israel, you can see me." You see the God that part of the Red Sea? Look at Israel. And Israel disobeyed and God punished them. Israel disobeyed and God punished them. Israel disobeyed and all right, God said, all right, that's it. He gave them that responsibility they didn't do it. God said, that's it. 722 B.C., the Assyrians captured the northern part of Israel. 606 B.C., the Babylonians captured the southern part. And Israel was no more. Man, it is our job. And just, and just, I don't get off track too much. We got problems in this country, you know. And we've tried everything. We tried a, 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 a black president, a white president, a Democratic Congress, Republican Congress, social programs, military. We tried it all. Congress has got about what, a 13 percent approval rate. Looks like Keystone cops up there. You know, I mean, I'm embarrassed as probably as you are. That's you can't run a family like that, like they do. So what's the answer? What is the answer? As Donald Trump would say, 2 Chronicles 7.14, the 2nd Chronicles. 2nd Chronicles 7.14, it 
if my people, 75% of people in the United States profess to be Christians, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek our faith, turn from evil ways, I hear the voice from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. That's the answer to the problem. But that's not, a, that's not a whole talk. But anyway, man, that's our... It is our responsibility to stay connected with our family spiritually. It's your job to teach your children about Jesus Christ, about the resurrection, about the virgin birth, about sin, repentance, hell, salvation. That's our job. That's our responsibility. And we, 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 need, to, we need to take it seriously. And then pray for them. Man, once they get going, you just got to pray. I prayed for 20, so I said, man, I prayed that my son would marry a godly woman. That's all I want, just marry a godly woman. And he's been married about seven years. He married a, a young lady, Christian lady, godly woman that graduated from the University of Tennessee. And I should have been a little more greedy and prayed for a godly woman that could read, but uh, <laughs> struggles to have that degree in the mountains of Tennessee. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I can't tell that no more in Atlanta. That's too close to Tennessee. You can tell it out here. I'm out Tennessee. But pray. Proverbs 22, 5 and 6. Train up a child in the way that they should go. Even when they're old, they will not depart from it. You know, when I, uh, like, when my daughter and son got married, they asked the groom, the, the bride, the, the, the father of the bride and the groom to speak on that rehearsal dinner. And I gave this verse to my children. Once a week, I'll pray this for my children. Sometimes more than once a week. I got a verse for my children. What verse do I want for my children? Is there an unmarried couple in the culture we live today? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Pray for your children, man. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to stay connected spiritually to your children. Two more. Discipline. Discipline. As you attempt to be connected with your uh, children and your wife spiritually, or you start, if you haven't been all active, and you start a devotion, or you get committed to your Bible and start studying it, you try to be a walking, talking billboard, rest assured, Satan will attack. You better be disciplined because he's coming after you. The more active you are, the more active he is. Until you prove that he shouldn't mess with you. That you got this, and you know the answers. And God, Jesus was in the desert, attempted by Satan three times. What's the first thing he did? Every time, quoted scripture. Good enough for Jesus, good enough for us. I know that. But when you get when, 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 when you get active, you better be disciplined because Satan is coming after you. He's going to attack. The best way, if you want to be a godly man, guess what? You better hang around godly men. You want to be a godly husband? Guess what? You better hang around godly husbands. That's why these things. These, these meetings are so critical. It, 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 they are just critical that you get around a support group. You saw all those tents and those booths out there. All kinds of support system for you. Churches that are supported, local churches. Man, get, get, be ready. You, you, you need armor. But hang around godly men. You know, as a head coach, if I wanted toughness on my team, I better go sign some players that like collisions. And a lot of people think football is a contact sport. Basketball is a contact sport. Dancing is a contact sport. Football is a collision sport. You better sign players that like collisions. You better hire coaches that like to teach collisions. And as a head coach, you better orchestrate your practice. Where it lays time for some live school full speed collisions. It's the same way you won't be around godly men. You won't be a godly man. Hang around godly men. Same thing in coaching and anything else in life. You say, well, gosh, that means I should only isolate myself with Christian men? Well, Christian, that's the only people I should associate with? No, that's not what God says. He says to separate yourself, not isolate yourself. It says you should be different, not odd. You go out, if you're different, you attract people. If you're odd, you repel people. When you go out with another couple, they're unchurched, they might not be Christians, and they drop you off, man, there's something different about them. They, they didn't laugh at that joke. Or did you see their reaction when we were talking about somebody else? There's something different about those people. 
as Christians, that's 